Today, you're gonna to see a real transformation. We're here in the Richland West End area of Nashville, which is a historic district. Lots of really interesting old craftsman -y kind of houses and cottages. And a lot of these properties, having been around for so long, have a lot of older features in their yard. And we have a wonderful, wonderful example of what you can do in one of these relatively small city lots and modernize it and make it so useful. The man whose vision you're about to see is Bill Hewitt, who's here with me today. He's the designer of this wonderful garden. Hi, Bill. Good morning. Bill, explain to me a little bit about how you decided how to treat this landscape and what the homeowner was after. Uh, the lady that lives here likes variation of plants. She likes a more of a cottage-like garden. Mm -hmm. So I tried to give her a lot of different textures and colors of plants and somewhat a little bit on the historic side because of the neighborhood yet right. bringing it forward into our more modern plants and right. new varieties that we have nowadays. Right, for example, I'm seeing those small oak leaf hydrangeas there. Yeah. That's a new variety, That's right? That's a new munchkin that was developed in Winchester by a lady from TSU. That's a really dwarf variety, yeah. right? Yeah, stays supposed to stay under three feet. Wow. About four foot wide. But it blooms just like a regular oak leaf. Just yeah. like it, much more prolific bloomer. That's, it will be totally white. In a small yard like this, that makes a ton You're of right. sense, whereas a regular oak leaf would be a big problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I see you've done a sort of a mix of, of uh, perennials and shrubs and, and uh, a really nice textural thing and a lot of evergreens for. Yeah, um, try to the evergreens for the winter time right. to hold the color. Right. And uh, different things have different purposes. Uh, tried to use like the plum use so, because they're very soft and I untrimmed love look and mm -hmm. just a great plant. And you've got another one I love there, Rodea. That's yeah. really, Rodea really good. Rodea is unknown to most people, oh. but it's probably one of the toughest plants for the deepest shade that exactly. you can Exactly. I love the way you've used rocks too. Sort yeah, of that's well. kind of my signature on it all of the gardens I do. I want to use the boulders within it to Mm -hmm. create interest. With the lichens on them, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I really love the walkway that you, you know, you, you put the, this new walkway in, right. correct? Yeah, it's somewhat of a Japanese style. When you mm -hmm. go into the back of the, the back garden, it's all very oriental looking. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's somewhat got the flavor of the neighborhood, but yet got a little Right. I can see there is a kind of a, an Asian cottage kind of right. <laughs> me yeah. meld there. We even took it forward into the driveway. And yeah. It's we changed really... all the elevations in the yard when we come in here. Yeah, I can so... see you, you flattened the driveway out. It, right. It looks like in this neighborhood they tend to go downhill. As yeah, a, as on the this lot... side of the road everything goes down into the house. Right, the backyard's lower so than the front. So we brought it yeah. up to even tilt the water back to the street instead of toward cool. the house. That, yay, changing the grade, always a good idea. Well, this mm. is really beautiful. I mean, obviously you had big trees to start with, right. but I love the way that you've bermed up a little bit over here too. Yeah, that's, raised beds are much better than laying it. A lot of people just go in and plant what they got. And I know you it. You can raise them so much easier to grow the plants. And drainage is so much improved, especially right. when you have clay. And you've used the, uh, you sod it here with zoysia, I'm seeing. Yeah, There's a new variety called uh, Zorro, which is a finer texture than I, what we've had. It is, it's much yeah. finer. That's yeah. really beautiful. It's a really ni nice grass. Bill, I see you've used a couple of really striking conifers out at the front part of this garden. Yeah, the oriental spruce he is, we're looking at is a very neat, weeping conifer that's really a very slow growing plant. That one we're looking at is probably eight to ten years old. Mm -hmm. So it is very three or four or five inches a year about all the growth rate on the little tree. And really a graceful habit on that. Right. Nice specimen corner piece. And it does well under the part shade like yeah. that? Yeah. In, in our, our climate, climate. Yeah. yeah. Where it's really hot it'll, in our it likes that little bit of shade it's gonna get. That's great. And then over here, you have a Camisiparis. Right. It's an obtusa nana. It's a top graft plant. It's got a little bit of trunk showing. Mm -hmm, I see that, a little squat trunk. Very dwarf, mm -hmm. very slow growing. It also likes the shade of this dogwood tree somewhat. And I really like the dark green uh, 
contrast of that right. deep foliage. And I always love the fan shape of the, the foliage too. It's yeah. delightful, a lot of movement. It likes there. the raised bed where it's got mm -hmm. a lot of drainage and mm -hmm. likes very rich soils. Well, you should be happy. I'm sure you've done a great job on the soils. I tell you what, let's go to look at the back. Okay. This corkscrew willow, I guess, was yeah, here. Yeah, this is one of the owners I think planted when they first bought the house, and it's well, it's a, it's a neat tree. It's I love neat, the shape of yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah. Handled nicely. But obviously, you've pretty much done everything else here. This is amazing. This waterway going down. Yeah, that was one of the requirements. So we would create the sound of moving water, which is very relaxing. And it takes away some of the city noise that's around, and it's just a neat stream. It is. It's just gorgeous. It is really, really beautiful. And it takes advantage of the slope that's Right. That's Great here. slope to build on. And, of course, your, what I think of as some of your signature small conifers that uh, you, you have so many of at your nursery. This beautiful right. little the, spruce. This great little plant. I mean... They love to be in these really fertile beds. And mm -hmm. Most of the time, if we can get them into wet, really well-drained areas, they all will do really mm -hmm. well here. Yeah, that's. I love the blue, and then this contrasting. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Just a great shape. I mean, it's like a little specimen surrounded by this, this lovely the time. time. Yeah. Look how happy that is. She wanted a vegetable garden. <laughs> yeah, a neat natural bed, uh, raised garden. That is a Instead raised of doing bed it with of rock. Just blocks, and this is really an organic way of doing. You don't have anything it within that that's man-made. Right. We're at so. the end of the season, so things right. are fairly spent. But you can see she had some great tomatoes, right. and beans, uh, and lots of herbs. Nice herb garden mm -hmm. on the back of the house. And right. Very convenient to the house. For sure. And then a little like a flower bed here. Right. It looks like a lot of uh, butterfly plants in yeah, there too. Yeah, mainly for the children to right, have enjoy. part of the garden. Bill, I really, really like these spruces you've used going down this property line. What kind is that? It's called Cupressina. It's a type of Norway spruce. It uh, stays very narrow as it grows. It'll grow 30 feet and not be over five or six foot wide. Wow. That was the idea of putting them there to hide the neighbor's property from right. this property. Eventually they'll grow into a big wall, but to have no pest problems is a reason. Yeah. A lot of people use arborvitas, right. and you and have to fight bagworms Bagworms and mites. <laughs> this is a great <laughs> yeah. plant to substitute instead. I really love these cryptomeria that you've used at the end here. What yeah. variety is that? It's one called Second Suki. It'll actually be white in the springtime when the new growth comes on it. Oh, really it, light. It, right. It looks like it's been decorated. Oh. So it's a wonderful change in the landscape. And that's another plant that does really well here. Yeah. Yeah. How big will that get? Oh, probably 40 feet. Mm-hmm. So, but stays narrow. Yeah, yeah, somewhat narrow. Another really great screening plant. And I love the lower, obviously, the that context. Little black of, pine. Little black pine. Is this, yeah. yeah, Japanese black pine. Really Some of beautiful. the new... Abelias, the sunshine mm -hmm. daydreams. That's really pretty. That's nicer. I like that variegated form better than the other. Yeah, this one's really neat in the fall. Mm -hmm. That's when it's showtime. And I know we're standing on the underground pond. Right. It's a safety feature for this yard. This is a big tank. It's almost like a cistern mm -hmm. underground is what we built. And that's what the water, the stream into runs it. into. Yeah. It protects the pump. You don't, I mean, you don't accumulate a lot of algae in your water because right. it's all underground. The right. stream stays fairly clean. This lovely, lovely outdoor room is spectacular. Yeah. A little Japanese tea house. It's fully enclosed to give you a very private area. You can come to your garden and sit and listen to the water run and oh, just scream. relax. Right. So you don't have to get eaten alive while you're out here. That's correct. And it, but it's all Tennessee cedar. Yep, Tennessee red cedar. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. So it has no preservatives and it's so it'll just weather to a nice silvery yeah, gray. Right. Oh, what a lovely place to have out here. Right. Oh man. Place to entertain friends. Mm -hmm. to and you built this. Right. No pre-cut pieces to this thing. It's all just handmade wow. pieces. I just 
kind of really drew a little sketch on the paper and had at and it. Started building. <laughs> started building. All right. Well, yeah. it's beautiful. Just yeah. beautiful. But coming out of this wonderful garden room, I love the way the back of the house, the aspect out into this beautiful backyard that you've built. Well, in any good garden design, it's what it looks like on the inside out. Because you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. It's a wonderful picture from inside, even in bad weather. You're going to be able to look out and just feel the outside coming in. That's true. That point of view is really critical. People spend more time looking out the window than they do out in the garden. Too many times people plant right up next to their house and when they look out the window they don't see it. So if you move it out into the lawn area where you can actually see what you have, it makes a lot more sense yeah. how you do things. And it's so aesthetically, it's just so much more pleasing. Well, I just got to compliment you on this place. You've done a ton in a, it's a pretty small lot. Right, and it's not very big at all. It's pretty typical of the West End neighborhood. It is, but you've really made it work with the beautiful stonework and the, I love the way you've changed the elevations. It's just uh, really, really, yeah. really fancy. It's a great retreat for someone that's very busy mm -hmm. that they can come home and relax. Well, thanks so much for giving us this great tour. It's really beautiful. There we go. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.